If you currently run a Facebook community or you're planning to start one soon, in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how to automatically extract email addresses from new members joining your community and through automation, move those email addresses into your email autoresponder, your CRM, wherever you'd like to move them to, to follow up with those leads, nurture those leads and convert them into paying clients. So I originally recorded, published and shared this video on my channel late last year. And since then, this was one of the top performing videos on my channel. I had over 5,000 views, had over 100 likes, a bunch of comments, and many of the comments were sharing, saying basically that this value delivered in this video was something that wasn't even included in their multiple thousand dollar course on how to grow and monetize a Facebook group. So here shortly as I get into things, I'm gonna share my screen, peel back the curtain, go into my own community to share with you exactly how we have this set up in my community itself. And then from there, share with you exactly step by step how you can go about integrating this into your community. All right, so with my screen shared here, we are looking at our free Facebook community on Lee CEOs. Again, for those of you here that aren't members of this community yet, link in the description below to join us. But as we have this pulled up here, what I wanna do is jump over to our membership questions and membership requests, uh, which we actually have a few in queue right now, but these ones are actually ones that we will not be approving. I'll explain why here shortly, but to zoom in and make it a little bit easier for you guys to see, you can see the first two requests here are just requests that didn't answer any questions. But when you run a Facebook community, you have the option to incorporate any questions that you choose up to three for new members to answer. So for us currently right now, we have a series of three questions in place. The first question is asking for phone number of the new member coming in, basically offering one free access to a paid training, sharing the conversion system that allowed us to scale to over 600K in just two years, drop your phone number below and I'll text it over. So for us alone, with this automation that I'm gonna be walking you through on how to set up, this allows you to even extract things like a phone number. And for us, we have this connected via automation to move this right into our CRM, where we can then send them a series of drip text messages to give them access to this course and connect with them via text. Second up, we have the option of one free access to a private case study training, sharing how our private client doubled his closing rate, shaved 10 hours off his work week, and scaled his coaching business from 10K to 100K in six months. Drop your best email address below. So this is the email field. And then lastly, we have a direct question asking if they'd like to hear more about working with us and what that looks like at a higher level in terms of joining us in our coaching program and us supporting them with installing our systems into their business. So we have three questions here, phone number, email, and a yes or no option. The biggest thing that we're focused on in this video here is how to extract the email address. And this tool allows you to extract all the responses from every question here, but it makes it super, super easy for you to connect your email autoresponder and ethically move these emails into your autoresponder itself. One of the biggest mistakes I see many people make when trying to extract emails from new Facebook group members coming into their group is the fact that they don't have any automation or tool set up to do this. And they're literally just copying and pasting or taking screenshots of these requests with the answers. And if you do this and you're copying and pasting, let's say this was an email here, I was grabbing this copying it and moving it into my autoresponder, this is not the way you wanna go about things. In fact, when you do do this, this will flag that email address as being spam and something that's not added in an ethical way. So when you do go to send emails to them, it likely won't get delivered. The best way to do this is through a tool that we're gonna be walking through and I'm gonna share with you here next. So as we dive into the next step from here, I wanted to first share with you what this looks like in terms of how we're using these membership questions to connect this tool to, to extract the answers to those questions to the places that we want to move them to next. So with that aside, what we're gonna do from here is pull up the tool that I use to make this possible, which is called Group Collector. So this is a Chrome extension. And when you install this Chrome extension, we'll click here to pull it up. You can even see that GC approve, this button has changed from just being approved in a Facebook group to GC approve because it's using this tool called Group Collector. This tool automatically approves members that answer at least two of the questions in our membership questions. So for us, we don't approve members coming into the group if they don't at least agree to the terms and answer one question. Like in these instances here, these ones that are pending, these ones will not be approved. These first two did not even agree to the terms. So these will be declined. And the ones that did agree, the ones that did answer all the questions or answered two of them, we had multiple come in this day. And the reason they're not showing up here is because within seconds of them answering those questions, this tool automatically approves them without me having to touch it. So as we dive into this tool, next we're gonna walk through what this tool is, how to set it up, and how you can get this in place in your own community. So the tool that I use to make this possible and super easy to integrate is a tool called Group Collector. And I've used a variety of these tools before, including Group Convert and a couple of others in the past. And what I like most about this tool is that it's super, super easy for anybody to integrate because it doesn't require you to use any additional apps for you to connect your group membership questions to your email autoresponder. 
it all is done natively within the platform itself. And this is where you can see here on the page where they break everything down and what's included with it. It shows Zapier is not required. Group Collector directly integrates with autoresponders. You can connect unlimited groups, un approve unlimited members. I won't go through the whole breakdown of what's all included here, but again, you can get started and sign up for a free trial with the link in the description below. Once you create your account and set up your account, you're gonna click on and install the Chrome extension, and this will allow you to basically open up and go to the dashboard of Group Collector. When you get to the dashboard of Group Collector here, this is where we're gonna wanna first set up and add a new group. Since I already have my free Facebook community connected and set up with this tool, I figured I would set up a new test group as an example for you to see from start to finish how to go about integrating this tool. So what you'll do first is simply click add a new group. From here, we're going to put in the group name. So in this example, this is simply called test group. And then you're gonna to wanna to add the URL to that group. I already have this copied onto my clipboard. So we'll paste this URL to the Facebook group there directly and click create group. Once we create the group, we can now see here, test group is showing up for us. The link to it is here. And there's gonna be a few additional steps that we need to do to connect things. Number one, we need to add the Google Sheet. Number two, we need to connect the autoresponder. So to add the Google Sheet, we're simply going to click add here and they give you a super easy templatized version of this to connect. So you can see here, click here to make a copy of the group collector sheet. We're gonna click this and open this up next. And now this is giving us the predefined sheet with all of the header rows that we need to have in place for this. From group name, group URL, user ID, Q1, A1, Q2, A2. Essentially, this is where question one would go, question two would go, question three would go, and the answer to each of those questions will go here. And then it will automatically put the email address in its own column, and then we'll walk through how to connect that next. But the first thing we're gonna wanna do is just simply open up this sheet, click file, make a copy. And then you can rename this sheet however you want. You may not see it here with my screen cropped on screen, but rename this to whatever title you want, whatever your group name is, group name, member sheet. And you're gonna to wanna to go from here and click file, click share, share with others. And we're gonna open this up to anybody with the link and make this editor. So once we set the permissions accordingly, we can copy this link, jump back over to the tool and paste this right here. Now all we have to do is click update and authenticate Google Sheet. It's gonna have me log in. And now we can see that the Google Sheet is now connected. We're able to edit it here by coming back to it, but the point is everything is connected in place and with what we need to have. Next up, we're going to want to add autoresponder here. So you can click add autoresponder. So once you select autoresponder here and you go to select your autoresponder, it's gonna literally give you the option of whatever autoresponder you're using. They literally have every main autoresponder you can think of within here all ready to go. So just select the tool that you currently use if you are using an autoresponder. Select that and then from there, you're good to put in the information that it requires for each. Every tool is going to be different with what it requ requests, but again, it shows you step-by-step step what you need to do to gather this info and connect it in. For active campaign, for example, you need to put in the API path, the API key, and then the ID to the list that you wanna put all your members into, which I'd recommend setting up a specific list for new Facebook group members. And then if you wanna add a particular tag to that contact as they're imported into your autoresponder, you can do that in the bottom box here as well. But these first two fields, API path and API key, as you can see, if you're using Active Campaign, for example, you would just go to the settings area of Active Campaign, you would click on developer, and then from there it would share with you your API access codes. Once you connect and verify this, you're essentially good to rock and roll. And what's nice about this too, like I mentioned here with the list ID, if you have a particular list set up, such as Facebook group members in your email autoresponder, this is where you can then set up an automation inside that email autoresponder to say, hey, whenever a new member is added to this list, send them this email sequence. You can send them a series of emails welcoming them to community, pointing them to trainings or resources that you have, offering them to book a call with you, et cetera. This is how we can easily provide more touch points to those members coming in, nurture those leads, and convert those leads into paying clients. So that is step number two in setting up and connecting your autoresponder to Group Collector. With that verified and added, right now you won't see it here because I didn't add active campaign here, but you can see in my example above, we have the Google Sheet connected on my main group, the autoresponder connected. The last section that you're gonna to wanna to be familiar with in this tool is the auto approval section. This is where it becomes super, super powerful. Once the Google Sheet's connected, the autoresponder is connected, you can now play with your auto approval settings. So in the auto approval tab here, you can number one select, do I want to enable auto approvals? This is an option. If you don't wanna turn it on, you do not have to. For me personally, I like to have this enabled because it saves me from having to constantly check my group member request, click approve, click deny, et cetera. It does it all for me. So what I would do here is enable 
auto approval for this group. Here, you're going to select auto approve new members after every X amount of minutes. So the minimum requirement is every 15 minutes. And this is what I personally have my group set up at. So essentially every 15 minutes, this tool is going to scrub through, look at member requests. If there's new ones there and they meet the terms that I want them to meet, it will automatically approve them. So we put in 15 here. This really isn't fitting unless you're running a public group. Most of you here are running private groups where you're collecting the information and hosting it via private group as well. But again, description and breakdown on this field is there for you if you are running a public group. The most important next step is right here where the filters that we wanna have in place for what we want to tell this tool to know whether they should approve the person automatically or not approve the person automatically. This first step is going to be email must be entered in any of the questions, correct? I personally would have this turned on. Agree to group rules, correct. I do not want anybody to be approved in my group unless they agree to the terms and the rules. And then this is where you can get even more specific in spelling out exactly minimum number of questions answered. So if you wanna make sure that new group members answer at least two questions, like we have ours set up, you can put in two here. If it's at least one question or all three, you can choose here. Joined Facebook before at least X months. This is actually a pretty powerful additional feature to have because Many times there's a lot of Facebook users that are spammers and bots that just quickly create multiple different accounts and are going to join groups to spam them. So for me, if it's a Facebook account that was just created within the last 15 days, I more than likely don't want them in my group. So I could just put down here, if they created a Facebook account within the last 15, or in this instance, we can say one month, then don't approve them in the group. Otherwise you can leave this blank. If you want to specify a specific city that they're located in, where the user should be located in order to approve them, you can even go to the extent of selecting a specific city that they must be in to be approved. I personally have this blank. So beyond the city, next up, you can also specify whether you want a minimum number of friends already in the group for that new person coming in. So they must have X amount of friends in common with other group members. Again, this is getting granular, it's not necessary, but this is a cool option to have. Minimum number of mutual friends with me. So if you like to only let in group members that are trying to join your group, that have a certain number of mutual friends with you, you can specify that there, and a minimum number of groups in common with me. You can specify this as well. If you don't wanna use these additional features, you can always just leave these at zero. And then lastly, at the bottom here, you can also put in a group password. So some groups, and I actually originally had my group set up this way, where if you wanna just make it so members can join if they put in a certain password in one of the three questions, you can actually specify that password and then this tool will scrub and look whenever a new group member joins, did they put in this password or did they not? If they did and it matches the password that you put in here, it will approve them. If they didn't, it will deny them. And then scrolling down further from here, there is also the auto decline settings. So in auto decline, you can enable this to automatically decline members that meet certain terms. So only decline member requests that have after X amount of days have passed. So if they requested to join, they didn't answer the questions that you specified on the first settings, and it's been three days since they haven't, and they haven't updated it or come back and agreed to the terms in that time, you can automatically deny them. You could put in three here, seven here, whatever day you choose. And then there's another option here, decline all members that have blocked you on their Facebook accounts are, or if their account are suspended. I personally would enable this on. If somebody blocked me or if their account is suspended, I wouldn't want them to join the group. So this is a great thing to be able to enable as well. And then lastly, there's more additional fields here. Again, based on certain terms or questions in the group, if they didn't agree to the rules, if they didn't agree to certain questions, you can decline them automatically and in turn, allow it so you don't have to go in and manually click that button. Once this is all set up and the fields are all specified in a way that you're happy with before enabling it, all you're gonna to wanna to do is click update, approve and decline settings, and you are good to go. You can come back to groups here and you'll see the list of groups again. And again, what you wanna make sure is that all of these show edit. If it shows edit here, edit here, and edit here, this means all of them are enabled and you're good to go. And at this point, literally it's just set it and forget it. It's going to look at the terms that you set up for approvals and denials. And then if we jump back over to the group here, I'm gonna share with you again how this all flows through. So just in the time of me making this video alone, as we jump back to my main free Facebook community that I shared earlier in this video with the members that were pending that didn't agree to any terms or didn't answer any questions and the ones that just put in a few random responses, you can see that the tool picked up 15 minutes later, went through, realized they didn't meet those terms and declined all three of them. So again, once this is all set up and in place, it's literally set it and forget it. It's gonna run automatically for you behind the scenes. You don't have to touch it. You don't have to mess with it. You don't have to approve or deny anyone. And the ones that are approved will automatically be moved over into that Google Sheet that we set up 
earlier in step number one. So again, with this in place, as soon as this tool runs every amount of time that you have it set to, if those members meet the requirements, it will approve them, it will move them into this sheet, and it will add them to the autoresponder. To share with you exactly what it looks like on this, I went ahead and pulled in one example from our own group sheet, and then just covered up the email and the name of this person for sake of privacy. So you can see here to start in the first field, it shows the group name that they joined is Unleash CEOs. Next up, it shows their URL to that Facebook group, their URL to their own Facebook profile, which is helpful to have, shows their Facebook username, the day they joined Facebook, and then here we're going into the questions that we have set up. So here's Q1, their answer to Q1 with their email, Q2, their answer to Q2, Q3, and their answer to Q3 with their phone number. As we go over here, it shows the exact date that they were added into the group. It shows their first and last name. It even goes to show in detail the number of mutual friends they have with me, the number of groups they have in common with me, the number of friends they have inside my Facebook group, and then again, the specific field for email. So your autoresponder, as you connect that up, it's gonna automatically look into this field, pull this out, and add it to that list that you specify. Um, and then there's a few other fields here as well, invited by name, invited by URL, and then if they agreed to the group rules or if they did not agree to the group rules itself. This will be a rolling document for you to have that's automatically updated every single set amount of minutes that you have it set to. And again, all the data will be populated accordingly once the tool approves or denies them itself. The ones that are denied won't be added to this sheet, just the ones that are approved. So for those of you that may have caught the last video that I dropped on this exact topic last year that got pulled down, again, there was multiple more steps that I walked through to get this in place. I was using a tool called the Group Convert, and when using Group Convert, they didn't have a native integration for the email autoresponder. I had to go and set up and use a tool called Zapier to connect that automation and make sure everything flows. With Group Collector, it makes it super, super easy. Everything is natively built within the app. You can connect your autoresponder, you can grab the Google Sheet and the template they give you, make a copy of that, connect it, following these exact steps that we walked through here today. And once you set your settings accordingly and click save, you are good to rock and roll and the tool will do its thing for you. So for those of you here that watched this video through the end and enjoyed what we walked through here today and got value from this one, again, be sure to smash the thumbs up button before you head out. And any questions that you have on what we went over today, let me know in the comments below. For those that have not yet already, be sure to smash that subscribe button before you head out as we drop new videos like this on the channel each and every week. And again, for those that wanna plug into the tool that we walked through today to make all of this possible, link is in the description below to start your free trial for Group Collector. So with all that said, thanks again for watching. And for those of you here that are looking to get more value on this topic of Facebook groups to help you build, grow, and monetize your community, I went ahead and linked two other videos here that I've posted on the channel previously on this topic to provide some more value to you. So be sure to check those out if either of those look like they would be something that would benefit you. And until next time, I will see you on the next video.